Hey there friends, Joy here with SubRosaTea.com. Welcome to Tea Time on Tuesdays at 2. I intend these videos to be inspirational, educational, or informational. I invite you to steep yourself up a cup of tea and join us every week as we do a deep dive into the tea we love. Thank you for watching. Today's topic is traveling with your tea. I've got some tips and tricks for you to stay sane and travel with your tea. In addition, I wanted to provide some health information and why I do what I do when I pack to get ready to travel with my tea. Now, traveling is an interesting topic this year, isn't it? None of us are really traveling the exact same way that we used to, but a lot of us still leave the house. <laughs> so even if it just means you're traveling to go to work, some of these tips and tricks or thought processes on why to bring what we're going to bring really might affect you. So whether you're going to travel by car, a train, if you're lucky enough to go in an RV, a boat or a plane, I have got you covered. So first of all, let's talk about what to pack and why and also how, how to steep it and when, when to steep it wherever it is you are going. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Joy and I'm the owner of Sub Rosa Tea. And primarily what we do is we were traveling for a living. We've had a website since 2012, so you can always buy all of our tea on our website and we're happy to ship it to you. But typically what we used to do is we would travel. Personally, I would travel to five states. We are from, we're based out of Northern Ohio. So I've been to Pennsylvania and Kentucky, New York, Michigan, and of course, Ohio. So if you've ever met me in person, would you smash that like button for me? I want to know who's watching. Have you met me in person? You probably know that I'm not always at my best when I'm traveling, but I'm always trying. And why? Why would I do this? Why would I travel when all of you can just buy our tea on the website? Well, I got to tell you why, because I love seeing you. I do. I love getting to know my customers in person. And even though we're doing it this way now, there's nothing wrong with that, right? This is good too. I swear I'm quite happy doing it. It's no problem for me. But I would travel. So I would drive anywhere from half an hour to four hours away from my house. Um, normally I was gone all weekend. Sometime I would do multiple shows. So what that looks like is I would travel to a destination, typically the night before. I would pop up my display. It's a, called a pop-up style vendor. That's typically what I'm referred to as. So whether it's a canopy because I'm outside or I've got folding tables and baskets and my whole display, it normally fits in a 10 by 10 square. So you guys really do have the advantage now because there's so much more available on the website. We've got great gift sets and combo sets on the website too, which I can't always bring to a show. And you know how it is. There's only so much that can fit in my car. So I might even have been sold out of your favorite thing. It's all available online. It's kind of nice to shop now. But when I was traveling, we would bring all of our products to an event. I would normally be staying in a hotel, sometimes in an Airbnb. And there's just so many variables. And even if this isn't your lifestyle, I bet you can kind of relate. You can kind of relate when you have to be somewhere on time. There can be stress and anxiety related when you're sleep deprived, when you're eating out in restaurants. There's a lot that can happen to a body once you leave the sanctuary of your own home. So let's dive in and talk about it a little bit. Normally, I think my suspicion is normally when people pack for a trip, they're going to pack something that in their mind is like a little medicine cabinet. They're going to pack something for anti-inflammatory. They're going to pack something um, maybe for digestion, possibly an antihistamine. They're going to pack something for a sleep aid. Well, guess what, friends? I didn't need to pack my medicine cabinet. I always just packed tea. So I want you to kind of think through your lifestyle when you travel to think about if there's something in your cabinet or your cupboard instead of your medicine cabinet. 
that you can bring when you are traveling. First up, first up friends, like I said, I normally travel for work. Even if I am traveling for pleasure, I have something that I would call agoraphobia. It's not really bad. I can leave the house. I don't like crowds. So if you've ever seen me in a really big, big show setting where the building was big and a lot of people come by, you might have seen me in the back and I've got staff in the front because I don't do crowds very well. So anti-anxiety is definitely one of my things, but I think there's just a lot of anxiety that can happen when you travel. You've got to be on time, possibly, or there's traffic, or there's just maybe an accident, something unexpected happens. Anxiety can happen to all of us, no matter what your travel situation is. So first up, in my suitcase always goes chamomile. Chamomile is great tea for anti-anxiety. It actually has something really specific in it called aptogen. It's a very specific thing in this chamomile that's really known to be good to reduce anxiety and make you feel more relaxed and calm. So yes, most people do think that chamomile is great at nighttime, which is fabulous for me when I'm traveling because I can drink it. But the fact is, it just doesn't have caffeine. So it's not a stimulant. So you really could drink it any time of day. Next up, second, my tea of choice is something for digestion. As you can imagine, when you're on the road, 40 weekends out of the year, you're gonna tend to eat out. But this girl here, friends, this girl is a foodie. Honestly, some of my travel practices revolved around my favorite food, my favorite restaurant. And I'm not a chain girl. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I really try to limit my food intake from food out of a window or from a chain restaurant. I love shopping small, shopping local, exploring the local cuisine, and what does the local chef bring to the market. So normally you're going to find me literally the day before I'm going to be scoping out restaurants and I'm going to be reading menus and I'm going to get really excited about what my takeout meal might involve in. When you are an adventurous eater, like sometimes I am when I'm traveling, you need tea for digestion. Not saying that I'm overeating or things that don't agree with me. It's just different. And I need tea debt for digestion. So regardless of your personal situation, I would definitely recommend a poo air. Now I am going to tag this. If you're watching the video live, you're gonna see like a red live above me. But if you don't see the red button, you're probably watching it on the replay. So don't hesitate to use the hashtag replay, especially if you've got a comment. Poo air is spelled kind of funny, so after I'm done, recording the video, I will tag it. We sell Pooware, like I said, it's spelled funny. And honestly, there are several types of spellings for Pooware. So if you are not familiar with it, it is an aged black tea. Honestly, I believe that most people that I talk to are um, very familiar with a product called kombucha, which is fermented beverage that is known to help with digestion, Pu'er is a fermented tea, obviously good for digestion. Why and how, right? How is it possible that the tea is good for that? Well, it actually works in several different ways. It's actually known to increase how dietary fat is excreted. So if you're overdoing it on the fat content, that's awesome. It also keeps the fat from your bloodstream, which is pretty cool. Puer in certain studies have actually been shown to lower your cholesterol. Also great if you're eating out in restaurants. And of course, it's just really good to help keep your digestion normal, whatever normal is for you. So Puer is definitely something that I always pack. And if you haven't had it, give it a try. Like I said, it is fermented, but it also is a black tea, which means it has caffeine. So it may not be for everyone, but I think it's perfect for what I need it for, especially while I'm traveling. A couple other things about Pu'er. Pu'er is known to be good if you are suffering from 
a hangover. Now, I am not a big alcoholic type drinker. Um, I love my tea, of course. I have been known to have a drink or two, but that's that's be real. You're going to a wedding or something, you're gonna have a few drinks with your friends and family, and perhaps you are traveling for the wedding, like you're staying over. Travel might definitely be involved when you're going to a wedding. So again, puer would definitely be packed in the suitcase. The other interesting thing about puer, in my opinion, is it's one of my favorite things to be alternatively steeped. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you've been here in the Sub Rosa tea community for a while, you know that I'm infamous for steeping my tea in everything. <laughs> I definitely steep it in cold water for iced tea. I steep it in wine for sangria. I steep it in wine for, um, for rum for cocktails. What I've probably never shared with you is tea can also be steeped in hot coffee. It's true. It is absolutely true. Puer is one of the best to be steeped in hot coffee because of its flavor profile. It's got such great depth of flavor, but it's also really rich that it can stand up to especially a light roast coffee. The reason I bring this up is because today's video is all about travel. Well, if you're not at an Airbnb, or gosh, maybe even if you are, chances are in a hotel nowadays, you're going to find a Carrick machine. If you were to put your tea in the little cup in the Carrick machine, the water that goes through it could literally taste like coffee. If you're a real tea drinker, you might not want to do that. However, if the Keurig machine is there and they give you a light roast taste and you don't mind the taste of coffee, go ahead and make that coffee first. Make the coffee and then steep your puer right into the hot coffee. You never know, you might like it. I know it's a crazy alternative to do with tea, but again, we're talking about travel. Think about those times when you've had to drive really long hours into the night. You're going, you're going, you've got to get there. You've got some reason that you've got to be there on time and it's going to be a really long driving trip you need the caffeine, right? You need it. You don't want to have shakes, right? Don't go with the Red Bull. Don't do that. You don't want to do anything artificial. But the puer and the coffee caffeine levels should be nice and stimulating to get you where you need to go safely. So give it a try if that's one of your options. Next up, well, first of all, on the case of still on talking about digestion, like I said, puer is a black tea, so it has caffeine, which I know is not ideal, especially if you are having digestion issues late at night. You know, you've got to go to bed. Or maybe you just live a caffeine-free lifestyle. Totally get that. I always have ginger in my suitcase. I have ginger root. Obviously, we sell that at Sub Rosa Tea by itself. You can drink it by itself. You can add it to the tea of your choice. I also have um, a tea that has ginger root in it. My personal favorite here is triple root. Okay, so triple root has got ginger, turmeric, and sarsaparilla, which are three good um, teas that are all good for mobility. So as you know, what I do for a living, not only am I driving longer distances, I'm standing on my feet, I'm lifting um, heavy totes of tea pads and tumblers and tea and setting them up. So that kind of does both for me. Triple Root is caffeine free. It's got ginger in it, like I said, which is good for digestion and tummy troubles, but it's also anti-inflammatory, great for your joints. So definitely a triple threat to my system, giving me the goods that I need from my tea stash. So next up, let's see. I also wanted to talk about how ginger is good for nausea and travel sickness. Who gets motion sick? I typically don't, but on occasion, there might be a group of us vendors who are that say like going out to dinner or something like that where we're going together and I'm stuck in the back of a van. Well, I can get motion sickness if I'm, I'm in the back seat. Um, so anyway, that's another good reason to have ginger tea or your children perhaps maybe your children suffer from motion sickness instead of giving them a pill or a tablet think about giving them some tea 
it might work just fine for them. I'd also have to say, peppermint also needs to be in your consideration of what you're packing. Peppermint is really known to comb the body in addition to calming your muscles. So if you are having tummy troubles and it's like cramping and things like that, combing is the way to go. So not only does peppermint taste great by itself, which we sell peppermint by itself, I have to recommend our chocolate mint tea. It's got milk chocolate and peppermint, completely caffeine free. Um, I love the fact that it's caffeine free because I have a sweet tooth. So sometimes I need like double, I need something sweet and I need the mint, especially at night to calm my belly. So chocolate mint, highly recommended for that. Um, it's also good for, did you know though that because it's peppermint and you're steeping, you're going to steep your tea, actually smelling the tea, the peppermint tea, peppermint tea has menthol, which is known to be good for tension headaches. Again, I'm talking about traveling. Unless you're the passenger, you might literally suffer from tension headaches because you're driving, you're planning, you're stressed out, you've got to get where you're going at a certain time. Did you pack everything? You know, maybe you're in charge of your family and everyone else is packing. Oh, that, that could definitely add up to a tension headache in my opinion. So don't forget your peppermint tea. Next up, next up, I have to say tea for sleep. That's pretty obvious. Even if you are traveling close by and you are spending the night somewhere, tea for sleep is a great idea. You're in a different environment. Uh, um, perhaps you need to reset your internal clock because you've switched time zones. Again, I think really long travel days can just kind of throw you out of whack. So even if you don't really need a tea for sleep in your own home, you might want it in your suitcase. So the, the tea that I highly recommend when we're talking about tea for sleep is valerian root. We do sell valerian root by itself and we also have it in our tea called Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams has got chamomile, lavender, and valerian root. So it's good for anti-anxiety, it's good for the sleep, and of course it's really good. Valerian root it actually has been shown to promote the gamma waves, all that activity in your brain, promoting them to kind of calm down, keeping it from being overacted and overstimulated, which might have been how your travel day went. So definitely consider some valerian root. Next up, I think it's on everyone's mind, whether you're traveling or not, is a tea for your immune system. Absolutely, you do not want to forget about your immune system, especially while you are traveling. I think we can all admit, traveling, you're going to expose yourself to extra germs, and of course, it's extra stressful, which can cause your immune system a little stress. So something for your immune system. I think most of you know we sell elderberry. We sell them by themselves as just elderberry. We have a great tea called Purple Rain. It is a purple tea which has got anthocyanins. It's got elderberry and lemongrass. Lemongrass has known to be really refreshing and also it's great if you have dry mouth. Like I was telling you, what I do for a living is I talk, not just here in the kitchen, but for a living. So when I'm talking eight hours a day, if I were to get sick, you know the first thing that would go is my throat and I just cannot have that. So Purple Rain, um, definitely a great mix, a great blend, and of course elderberry by itself in forgetting honey lemon. Don't forget about that. Honey lemon is one of our green tea blends that has honey and bee pollen, which is a biofuel. So also really great for your immune system. And the honey lemon also has lemongrass in it. So great and refreshing. Great for a dry mouth. So it's like awesome, right? Oh, and it tastes good too, you guys. Honey lemon, it just does. It tastes fabulous. So they, let's see what else. 
So don't forget, pack yourself a variety. You don't want your taste buds to get bored. Definitely think about everything that you would have packed in like a medicine cabinet for your suitcase. All tea encompassing. And let's talk about a few more things. Just some tips and tricks for when you are traveling. So one option we have here, we have filter papers. We sell filter papers on our website in three different packages, package sizes. So let's say you've got the type of job where you don't have access to a kitchen and you don't want to clean anything, or you are traveling in a hotel. You got to check out right away in the morning, but maybe you're not going to get home till midnight. A filter paper might be nice for you. Um, filter paper is kind of like making your own tea bag. It's thin like tissue paper. It's got a pouch, so you could pre-fill it. You could put your loose leaf tea in the filter paper and uh, put it right into a zip top bag and take it with you. Another great option, cheesecloth, which is a brew bag so you can make larger quantities. Cheesecloth is reusable. You would hand wash and reuse. Uh, loose leaf tea goes in. It's got a drawstring. We sell brew bags and packages of five. So perfect for either hot or cold, traveling, very lightweight, easy to pack in any suitcase. But tip top for me is definitely our Everest tumbler. This bottle, friends, can you see the edge? This bottle, 22 ounces, so that's three servings of tea, which is so great if you're camping or going to be gone all day. You just fill it up once. You're golden. This bottle, hot for 10 hours, cold for 20, which I just love. Screw top lid, so even the little kiddos are not going to accidentally get it open. And then the infuser, because we sell loose leaf tea here at Sub Rosa Tea, it's right inside. So we've got the basket and it's got a twist. So the tea goes in here. So you can easily put three servings of tea if we're gonna fill up this bottle, three servings of tea. Put the lid on. The basket is bigger than it needs to be because some of our teas will expand when it steeps. So it's gonna grow in size, it gets voluminous. That's why this basket is so big. So this is called our Everest Tea Tumbler. Again, hot for 10 hours, cold for 20. Um, you can't really break it, which is nice. It's super durable, it's insulated. What I do if I were traveling on an air, I would fill the basket with my tea, and after I get through security, I would go find cold water and fill it up so I have fabulous cold steep tea with me on the plane. The other fun thing about this, friends, I am so klutzy. If you drop this on the plane, look, it's got like a break. Isn't that funny? It won't keep rolling, <laughs> which is really nice. Or I'm thinking RV. Like if you're in a really big RV and grandpa's out there driving and you drop your bottle, <laughs> at least it won't go all the way to the front. That's good, right? The last tip I'm going to leave you with is the Urban Tumbler. This is glass, which I love. Um, you're gonna drink out of this side, which I'll show you in a minute. But this is glass, cork, and steel, okay? So this is our urban tumbler. This bottle does come with an infuser basket for loose leaf tea, but today I'm not gonna do loose leaf tea. Instead, I'm gonna do matcha, which I would have to say is kind of my, my number one preference for um, travel. Oh, I didn't show you. If you don't know what matcha is, matcha is a powder. Let me see. Is that good? Good light wise? It's a powder. Okay, so it's tea. It's the whole tea leaf that we've ground into a powder. And at Sub Rosa Tea, we have it in four flavors. So we have ceremonial, which is technically plain, unflavored matcha. And then we also have it in peach, raspberry, and chocolate. And it's a powder, so you don't actually need an infuser basket. Long as my lid is on tight, we're gonna pour the cold water literally right in. There you go. And it's a powder, okay? So which means it is going to like literally dissolve in the water. You don't really need to steep it. All I'm gonna do is, again, make sure everything's on tight, and I'm gonna shake it. And I've got um, matcha cold brew. Like, that's awesome, right? So matcha, like I said, it's the whole tea leaf. It's green tea. So technically it's low in caffeine, 
but it's super, super high in antioxidants. It's a very specific antioxidant that will give you a fair amount of energy, but the antioxidant is super great for your immune system. So I absolutely love that it'll keep me energized throughout my travel day, but it's not gonna give me the shakes and it's not going to impede my sleep at all. And how easy is this? You can take your matcha with you to go anywhere. You can drink matcha hot, but I'm just kind of showing you a really easy way. If you can get to a water fountain or a cold bottle of water, You've got yourself some matcha tea to go. Super, super high in antioxidants. Just great for your immune system. So anyway, friends, thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate it. If you heard or saw anything that you'd like, I'd absolutely love it if you share today's video. And we'll catch you next time. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Bye-bye, friends.